So as Serena said before, uh, I, my field of expertise, I'm a clinician uh, originally, and my field of expertise is the development of uh, uh, advanced therapy medicinal products uh, from bench to bedside. And uh, I will briefly uh, tell you something about a translational path we have uh, done in the last years at Monzino, uh, bringing a cell therapy product uh, for uh, the treatment of a particular condition, uh, uh, which is a, a norfa condition in the cardiovascular field uh, that is called refractory angina. So uh, um, for a cell to become a drug is possible, but uh, of course uh, we, it's a shift of paradigm in which uh, pay, other cells from the patient or from a biobank uh, then used in autologous or allogenic setting must be produced uh, under a GMP controlled uh, good manufacturing practical environment uh, and then uh, delivered to the patient through a well-defined uh, uh, path. So what we have done uh, at Monzino is to try to establish in uh, an academic environment uh, a setting like this uh, uh, starting from patient cells uh, to uh, treat uh, uh, a cardiovascular condition. These uh, products uh, are uh, uh, inside a, regu a clear regulation uh, in Europe, uh, which is uh, a regulation uh, uh, in under this law. Uh, and uh, the products uh, are called ATMPs, uh, and ITMPs uh, are uh, these categories uh, like uh, tissue engineering, cell therapy, and gene therapy products. All these products are, are defined advanced therapies, uh, and uh, I was uh, honored to be a tema inside the committee, uh, which is called CAT, Committee for Advanced Therapies, that uh, is uh, in charge of evaluating the marketing authorization process to become commercialized uh, uh, Europe-wide. Uh, the regulation uh, is, uh, has uh, uh, specific features according to the type of product we are dealing with. Uh, today, uh, we will talk about uh, a product which, is, which falls in the category of somatic cell therapy, which is a uh, therapy uh, either in, used in allogenic of, uh, or uh, autologous setting uh, that use cells uh, uh, to treat uh, uh, um, pathologies uh, in, in the patients. As for which is uh, um, which have been uh, in the last 20 years, uh, they, they, um, the, the, the products that have been tested in for the car cardiologic setting in patients, uh, as you can see here, we have, uh, uh, we have faced uh, uh, a long story, uh, basically a long story of failures, and then we can talk about that later if you want, uh, using different types of products. Uh, uh, we have had the first generation of cells used in patients uh, like uh, mesenchymal cells, uh, hematopoietic stem cells, uh, bone marrow-derived cells, mononuclear cells, uh, endothelial cells, uh, or stromal cells, uh, that have been used uh, uh, in mainly in autologous setting to treat uh, uh, acute cardiovascular condition like myocardial infarction. Then uh, a second generation of cell therapy products that have been developed, uh, which are now under uh, um, uh, testing uh, either preclinical or clinical, like uh, uh, cardiac derived cells uh, or uh, IPS uh, induced pluripotent stem cell derived cells. And then we are uh, seeing uh, a third wave of, of product which have been classified as cell-free products, uh, which are uh, RNAs, exosomes, uh, factors, or patches, or the combination of these cell products, uh, which uh, are delivered to the patient with the same purposes. What we, have, we will uh, talk today is uh, uh, the translation of part of uh, a first generation cell and uh, you will see uh, a second generation uh, cell type uh, coming from the heart uh, that we are now developing at Monzino. The long story of this number of products uh, has been uh, cumulatively 
disappointing, uh, that has to be said, uh, for a number of reasons, uh, including uh, difficulty to identify the best cell uh, for the best patients, heterogeneity of condition treated, uh, and the lack of uh, uh, standards, uh, of manufacturing standards that have affected the, the field so far. So I think uh, one very important issue uh, we have learned, one important lesson we have learned uh, in these two decades uh, is that uh, um, there is uh, the need to identify a match, a matching between cell potency and uh, the disease uh, and uh, the peculiarity of the condition that has to be treated. Without this match, uh, without matching uh, the, the cell with the patient, uh, uh, probably uh, you, will, uh, uh, you will likely fail in the translational path. And this is what uh, I'm uh, alluding uh, uh, now. So we, we, it, this, is, um, this paper has a few years, but the concept uh, uh, in general, as that, uh, for example, for, was that, the, for example, for bone marrow cell therapy, for ischemic heart disease, uh, which is mainly myocardial infarction, the, although the, the, the majority of trials uh, and meta-analysis have been positive, this, this is a paper which has been basically a meta-analysis of meta-analysis, you see that the majority of papers have been positive in terms of uh, surrogate endpoints, uh, so early phase clinical trials, with, bone, with cells coming from the bone marrow, uh, either for acute myocardial infarction of chronic uh, uh, heart failure, ischemic heart failure. Uh, despite that, uh, the clinical benefit uh, eventually was uh, very, very mild. Uh, and the problem, in this paper we have considered 24 meta-analyses of about 80 randomized clinical trials. And the problem, as I said, was that the heterogeneity of target disease, the inclusion criteria, surrogate endpoints chosen to demonstrate benefit methods of delivery have, uh, in the end, uh, uh, produced, uh, generated a weak functional benefit when present, uh, and there is no conclusive data about clinical impact. So um, this is the background. So it's a long story of failure. So we have to learn a lot from this long story of failure to, to envisage the future and, and to, 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 to complete the translational path from bench to bedside successfully. I will try. To, to, to illustrate uh, what I think could be a translational successful path uh, from bench to bedside and back in the end, as you will see. So after this large amount of work and this body of evidence, I think two conditions, uh, clinical conditions, have been identified as most suitable as target for cell therapy. One is uh, advanced ischemic heart failure. Uh, New York Association class 3, 4, uh, over on top of standard of, of, standard of care, of, of course. And the other condition is refractory angina. I think for these two con cardiac conditions, uh, it was the shot to try to develop a, a, a new product uh, to go on top, because uh, the clinical need is still there. And uh, what we are uh, doing today is just or slowing the progression of the disease or treat symptoms. There is no etiologic therapy. Refractory angina, in particular, is a clinical condition which is a niche uh, of uh, the big population of uh, coronary artery disease patients. Uh, about 5% 4 of uh, uh, coronary artery disease patients uh, which uh, undergo uh, PCI. But uh, it's a niche uh, which is uh, clinically relevant uh, because uh, it is estimated that uh, uh, more than 30,000 new cases here in the US and Europe uh, uh, are present. Uh, these, these guys are characterized by, by a very poor health status, 
a dramatically impaired quality of life because of recurrent and sustained chest pain. Uh, they undergo polypharmacy, of course, uh, and they utilize uh, a, a large amount of healthcare resources uh, because they undergo frequent rehospitalization. This is clearly an, an unmet need in, in the cardiovascular arena uh, because the, the last drug, that was in, which is uh, ranolazine, that was introduced in the market has now more than 20 years. What we have learned uh, mechanistically, and Serena knows much better than me, uh, this uh, uh, mode of action of uh, cells introduced uh, in the ischemic tissue, either in the peripheral uh, condition then, or in the heart, is that these cells act mainly as uh, with a secretion of uh, uh, factors, what we call a paracrine mode of action, and uh, the secretion of factors uh, uh, produce a number uh, of effects, uh, including the most important, uh, vasculogenesis and angiogenesis. This is was clearly demonstrated for a number of cells, uh, including bone marrow cells, uh, either mesenchymal cells or mononuclear or positively uh, selected, like CD34 cells and 133 cells. So, the uh, paracrine indirect, uh, indirect mode of action uh, generating vasculogenesis and endogenesis is very appealing, uh, of course, for a condition like uh, refractory angina in which uh, there is a lack of perfusion. Refractory angina is characterized as is, uh, is a clinical correlate of uh, lack of perfusion into the, uh, the, the cardiac muscle due to uh, very advanced coronary artery disease. So this is what I have uh, told you about the matching between uh, the potency, what is called potency, at least in the regulatory setting, of the cell type uh, potency and the clinical need. So there is a need of uh, perfusion in, into the myocardial muscle because of uh, inadequ inadequate blood supply. And there is a, a, a potency, a mode of action of cells uh, acting uh, pa in a panacrine manner, uh, producing uh, new vessels. So this match uh, is interesting because you can, if you can exploit the, the potency of cells in, in, in patients who need the perfusion, this is uh, probably, could be probably a successful, a successful story. And then, of course, in the, in, in, in the algorithm of treatment of these guys, uh, you, angiogenesis uh, is uh, e on top because uh, before, uh, of course, uh, m uh, prevention measures, uh, drugs, uh, uh, sinus uh, reducer, so um, stent and, and, and so on. So you are on top of uh, treatment standard but uh, still uh, you need uh, this uh, new treatment because the, these patients uh, are clearly under-treated. And then a number of, pa of cells, as I said before, of first generation of cells have been used uh, clinically. And I think uh, that uh, for this uh, particular therapeutic purposes, bone marrow cells uh, are appealing. Uh, uh, because they are easily to harvest, uh, they are well characterized, uh, and uh, at least uh, in, uh, in the early development, uh, there are means uh, of uh, selection uh, which are clinical grade, because uh, this, these methods are used uh, in bone marrow transplantation. So you have uh, a, a, a well characterized cell, you have a clinical grade selection uh, uh, process, uh, then you are very good to start uh, for a clinical development. And this is what uh, basically what we have done at Monzino uh, starting uh, mainly 10 years ago by uh, use, uh, choosing this uh, uh, bone marrow cell that you probably know, CD133 cell, it's an early precursor. Uh, 
largely overlapping with CD34 cell, which is used in uh, bone marrow transplantation. Uh, an early precursor, which, uh, which mode of action is well known uh, to uh, uh, have positive effect in the ischemic art in terms of uh, tissue remodeling and uh, especially uh, angiogenesis. Then, uh, the, the sto this is uh, to make a long story short. Short, this is like five years uh, uh, work that uh, we have been the only and the one and the only center in Italy that have been cleared by IFA for a phase one trial using uh, uh, bone marrow cell for uh, uh, cardiologic uh, purposes. And uh, the path for development uh, in an academic center is painful because uh, you need to have uh, a well-characterized uh, GMP validation manufacturing process. Uh, you need uh, to build up a standard operative procedures uh, for uh, uh, cell selection that uh, were not uh, there so far. So uh, to end up uh, after a few years uh, with this ID card, uh, uh, according to cell, to cell pharmacopoeia, in which uh, the main characteristics of the bone marrow cell have been defined, like purity, viability, cellularity, sterility, endotoxin, of course. So once you have uh, the ID card of the cell and the established GMP uh, procedures, uh, you can switch to the patient. Uh, what we have done is uh, uh, to switch with the compassional therapy um, uh, scheme because at that time the uh, hospital exemption scheme uh, was not present uh, yet. So we have treated uh, 10 patients with refractory angina which have been uh, considered the early st end stage uh, of their clinical uh, uh, path. Uh, we have injected these cells uh, epicardially through a thora mini thoracotomic incision. This is a cardiac surgical procedure which is quite easy to be done in, in skilled hands. So we have uh, uh, demonstrated in this compassionate phase uh, that the, the therapy was uh, viable and uh, safe. And then with this large amount of data, we moved uh, to uh, IFA proposing uh, a trial uh, which has been called the Recardio trial um, of cell inoculation into the heart through a transcatheter delivery through a percutaneous approach. And this is uh, uh, the long phase of uh, authorization. And we ended up uh, in 2013 with the first authorization for a, the first therapy in Italy, cell therapy in Italy for, for uh, a cardiologic uh, issue. Of course, uh, and I will, skip, I will go um, fast through this process, uh, uh, the background uh, was done in the lab, and I think uh, what Serena, for instance, is, done, is doing here uh, at uh, ICHEB uh, is uh, a, a, a scale up of what we have done 10 years ago in terms of evidence. We have to demonstrate, uh, of course, that uh, this cell, our cells had the endothelia like uh, features, uh, a, a secretome uh, uh, adequate enough uh, to produce the effects. Uh, uh, in vivo in the model of Indelimb ischemia uh, uh, to create uh, um, new vessels in terms of arteri arterioles and, and capillaries. And then, uh, of course, uh, uh, this is the whole process. Uh, uh, the main feature of this process is that uh, what you have to demonstrate uh, is uh, that uh, the same cell uh, that you uh, used in the lab, uh, once have been released uh, in GMP production, have to, uh, to produce the same effects in terms of biological activity in vitro and in vivo. So it's a two-state project, uh, basically, that, uh, it's a, that, that is, of course, costly and, and, and uh, long-lasting. But then in the end, uh, uh, one very important aspect of all these projects is that you have to, uh, to be, to have uh, at home or to partner, and this is our case, with a very experienced GMP uh, environment. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, we have uh, partnered with uh, the GMP facility in Monza, 
uh, very. And then, of course, uh, during this long story, we have also published uh, some papers uh, of uh, characterization, uh, uh, manufacturing, and, of course, uh, um, potency of, uh, of uh, this uh, uh, cell type. In the end, uh, this is uh, the ultimate goal, uh, the Recardio trial. So the Recardio was a phase one prospective trial, multicentric, uh, to assess safety and, and uh, preliminary efficacy of uh, endocavitary injection of this cell type in, uh, in ischemic heart uh, in 15 patients with refractory cardiomyopathy, uh, endpoint was efficacy uh, and safety at uh, efficacy six months and safety at 12 months. Trial sites were Monzino, San Gerardo for the GMP facility and uh, Città della Salute uh, Città della Scienza della Salute di Torino Moline, uh, Molinette Hospital. The population, uh, uh, briefly, was a very sick population of patients uh, with ischemic homeopathy, not amenable to any type of uh, mechanical vascularization like bypass surgery and PCI. Advanced Canadian class, which is the class uh, uh, of angina uh, grading, uh, uh, ejection fraction between 20 to 45%, so not only uh, poor angina uh, status, but also depression uh, of uh, ventricular function uh, and present of reversible perfusion defect at SPECT, at scintigraphy of the left ventricle greater than 10% of the left ventricular surface. Endpoints were MACE, of course, major adverse cardiologic events at 12 months and uh, um, serious adverse events at 6 months as for safety. And then uh, an increase uh, of uh, summit stress score or summit difference score at SPECT, uh, at perfusion at six months, or an increase of peak uh, oxygen consumption uh, uh, at CPET at six months. This was the trial flow chart. Uh, basically, uh, sorry, basically, this patient, after screening, the patient underwent uh, bone marrow aspiration and uh, immunopositive selection of CD33 cell and endoca endocavitary injection, and then the follow-up. The uh, catheter that has been used was uh, brought to me from uh, US to Europe uh, for the first time. It's called Elix, uh, and then basically it's, uh, it's an Elix that uh, engaged the myocardial ventricle, the myocardial wall, in from the endocavitary approach uh, uh, and once it is screwed into the muscle you can inject uh, the cells. I will show you briefly this is uh, the um, video showing uh, how things are uh, processed uh, for treatment. Uh, uh, you, the, the patient underwent the day before bone marrow selection and then uh, the cells are brought to the lab. Uh, the patient uh, undergo character, the cardiac uh, uh, mapping, uh, electromechanical mapping to uh, identify the, 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 the viable tissue that has been already uh, characterized by SPECT or MR. And then these are the cells. And then the patient undergo um, fluoroscopy, um, ventriculography because the, the injection are done through a fluoroscopic approach. You see here the insertion of the catheter, a double lumen catheter. These are uh, uh, the cells and this is the contrast. You can see here once the needle is engaged in the ventricle, uh, we check for safety with, through a, a, a nice endocavitary uh, echocardiography. You can see here the catheter, the needle, into the myocardial wall exactly engaged. And after uh, the completion of the procedure, this is a merged acquisition between electromechanical mapping and echocardiography. And you can see the injection site. And uh, the amount of reverse, the, the white reversible ischemia at SPECT after six months uh, is reduced. This is basically the procedure which has been set uh, entirely at Monzino from the beginning, also clinically wise, uh, in order to deliver the best way as possible and safe possible the cells into the heart. 
Uh, we have, uh, of, of course, uh, uh, described the, the technique which was uh, the, the technique of combining electromechanical uh, uh, mapping, uh, so the electricity, uh, the study of electricity with uh, the study of uh, um, echocardiography for monitoring the injection. We have, uh, uh, for the first time, uh, uh, described this technique. And then, uh, uh, in the end, uh, we have the, uh, collected the results. Uh, this is not only to show how sick the patient were. Uh, so the mean ejection fraction, which is uh, the capacity of the heart to, 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 to function, was uh, 38, uh, normally is uh, above 45%. Uh, the amount of reversible ischemia was quite large in these patients. And peak VO2 is, was mean 13, and you can consider that 12 is the peak VO2, the, the threshold for cardiac transplantation. So sick patients. But uh, nevertheless, uh, these are the characteristics of the cells, uh, which at, has to fit, to comply with the identity card uh, that I have showed before. So this is the safety procedure. We have only two MACE and five non-procedural related uh, serial adverse event. Uh, we had two non-STEMI event uh, up to one year. Non-STEMI is a non-ST elevated myocardial infarction, which is conceivable, conceivable in uh, patients uh, as, as sick as these guys were. But uh, cumulatively, we, we can say that in this patient, uh, the, ex the safety profile was deemed excellent by, by ISS IFA. And we have observed the clear clinical benefit. This is cl Canadian class grading. Uh, four is the worst, zero is nothing. So this patient had the mean of Canadian class, which is the grading of angina, three at before treatment uh, and less than two after treatment at uh, 12 months, one year after treatment. And near class also improved. Uh, and in parallel, we have observed at SPECT with the scientigraphy uh, a, a perfusion benefit in terms of uh, summary, uh, summary stress score, which was the end point, as you may remember, which was reached, an amelioration of uh, summit stress score. Stress score, of course, is when the scintigraphy is done at stress and at rest. So when the heart was stressed, we observed an uh, amelioration of perfusion. And uh, the some difference, difference score, which is the difference between stress and rest, uh, which was uh, uh, as well very positive. And then we observed uh, uh, an amelioration uh, uh, of uh, the number of inducible ischemic segments uh, at, uh, at uh, stress. So this scintigraphy uh, evidence was uh, important for us to be matched with the clinical benefit. And then we have uh, uh, made uh, also a lab work on a small amount of cells, of the cells uh, that have been uh, saved before injection, trying to identify uh, those factors, uh, pro-angiogenic factors and pro-inflammatory factors that, uh, that can be, uh, can was, uh, were released uh, uh, to um, buy this the, the CD133 uh, cell product uh, in order to try to correlate uh, the secretion uh, with the benefit. And what we have found uh, is that uh, there is uh, a positive correlation uh, uh, in terms of scintigraphy uh, improvement uh, of perfusion and uh, uh, the secretion of hepatocyte growth factor and platelet derived growth factor BB. These two factors, especially platelet derived factor, are well known in uh, well, de well described in, ang in angina as uh, factors uh, present in the blood of patients with uh, insta unstable, angina, unstable angina. So these factors uh, correlate well with the perfusion uh, benefit. And then there is a negative correlation with uh, pro-inflammatory uh, cytokine, uh, Rantes uh, and uh, interleukin-6. Uh, so the, 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 uh, the worst uh, is the, the, the clinical benefit, the, the higher is the 
production of inflammatory cytokines. This is something that uh, was already expected but never uh, demonstrated uh, in, in patients. So the inferences were, were that in our hands, uh, this cell type, uh, it's a promise, it could be uh, exploited uh, in a clinic uh, for uh, a treatment on, of, on top of standard therapy for the fractal angina. Uh, and we were not the only ones showing that. There were, and I'm go briefly through that, there were many other groups worldwide, especially this one from Tom Harry, but other groups showing that uh, uh, a similar cell product, uh, CD34 cell from the bone marrow, was beneficial in terms of improvement of exercise capacity, uh, lowering uh, uh, angina frequency, and uh, even on top of that, uh, uh, showing the, a decrease in mortality in refractory angina patients treated with cell, cell therapy. O autologous cell therapy from the bone marrow, same setting as our setting, and meta-analysis uh, uh, has shown the same, uh, not only safety, but improving perfusion, uh, indices of angina, and outcomes. I will go very, very, for a time constraint, we have uh, uh, to skip this, but uh, also more recent meta-analysis have shown the same benefit. So there is a bunch of evidence, a bunch of evidence that uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, benefit, clinical benefit, uh, exercise tolerance, perfusion, cell therapy can be beneficial in refractory angina patients. However, as you can see here, the guidelines of the European Society of Cardiology, despite that, uh, has not, uh, have not introduced uh, cell therapy so far, along with the other um, non-conventional uh, treatments like uh, external extracorporeal circulation, sinus uh, coronary reduction in the guidelines. And uh, the reason is uh, very simple. It's because this uh, type of this scheme of therapy, the, 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 the autologous setting, is not enough uh, to uh, bring, uh, um, let's say, the, 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 the required standards for a treatment to be considered as a drug. Uh, industry is not so interested to develop uh, autologous therapies because this is what you have seen. It's basically a transplant scheme. And uh, the development of new, the, 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 the last matter, which is a pivotal trial, which requires a lot of money, is not being feasible so far because of the lack of interest from industries. So we have to shift, I think, from the autologous to allogenic setting. This is the only way to, to yes, to complete uh, the path and to, uh, in, to, to, to make uh, Big Pharma interested uh, to incorporate uh, in their pipeline uh, cell therapy products. Uh, I can explain, there are a number of reasons. Uh, the most important ones are that uh, pharma drug, uh, Big Pharma uh, need to, to understand how to manage uh, a, a biology like uh, chemistry. So the transition from a cell to a drug for them is a transition basically to an off-the-shelf product, which is not the case of autologous therapy. And second, autologous therapy is uh, affected by many risk factors and age as patients are normally. So you use uh, patient cells uh, which are uh, affected by the same problems that the patient itself. So for the, these are the two main reasons why a logenic setting is probably more suitable uh, for cells to become drugs. So very brief, and then uh, um, I think uh, to do this transition, the more interesting cell is the mesenchymal cell stem cell. Uh, for a number of reasons, the most important one is that it is well known that these cells uh, are more ideal candidates for cell therapy in allogenic setting because they are immunoprivileged and they produce immunosuppression. I know here we have immunology, so I'm not an immunologist, but 
these cells are also tested uh, in trials of, in versus graft versus host disease, and uh, at, at least in at my knowledge, are the, the the cells that are more immunoprivileged to be used uh, in allogenic setting. And the second reason is that uh, the the mesenchyma cells are very potent to produce angiogenesis. Uh, sticking with the refractory angina issue, they uh, they are known to release uh, uh, soluble factors uh, and uh, exosomes uh, that produce uh, tissue repair and vasculogenesis. Uh, the the stromal uh, cell uh, ad from adipose tissue example is uh, is one of this uh, one of the the best example how this cell can act uh, in. Uh, integrating uh, and uh, in a paracrine manner to produce vasculogenesis. So what we have done is going back to the, to the lab and trying to identify one cell candidate coming from a stromal uh, compartment of the heart that could be exploited as a tel cell therapy product in an allogenic setting. We have identified uh, this cell, uh, a Taiwan negative uh, stromal uh, cell uh, from the human heart, uh, which can be suitable for this transition. Um, the, I don't have the time to explain uh, uh, exactly all the lab uh, work we have done so far on this cell, but uh, what we have observed uh, is that uh, as for uh, the surface marker, marker profile, the CINI-19 negative uh, stromal cell uh, has a uh, strong endothelial feature along with the immunological markers uh, and mesenchymal markers, marker. And these endothelial markers uh, um, are probably uh, the sign that uh, this cell is uh, involved in uh, vasculogenic, homeostasis, vasculogenic homeostasis in the heart. Uh, these cells uh, are, uh, have uh, a, an antigen expression which is peculiar versus the stromal compartment, the total population of stromal compartment. And uh, as for the transcriptional profile, they again, uh, they have uh, a core of uh, endothelial uh, um, um, genes uh, that are uh, very prominent uh, for describing the, their profile along, along with bone marrow stromal cell genes, cardiac cell genes, and mesenchymal genes. Then we have tested the cells uh, very simply in a matrigel, showing that uh, uh, the negative counterpart versus the positive counterpart at the total population is capable uh, to, uh, to, to uh, produce, to generate more, uh, more uh, vessel in, in the matrix. And then the, uh, they also express uh, in an higher percentage uh, uh, markers of uh, mature endothelium like KDR, CD31, uh, uh, CD144. And then we have tried to understand uh, if uh, uh, these cells could be also cardioprotective uh, in a nostalgia environment we have taken advantage of a model of uh, uh, cardiotoxicity, of uh, a spontaneous cardiotoxicity uh, of uh, cardiomyocyte uh, derived from patients with uh, uh, Duchenne dystrophy. These guys have uh, a well-known uh, pattern of cardiomyopathy and the cardiomyocyte generated from uh, IPS uh, uh, from Duchenne patient uh, have features of cardiotoxicity, spontaneous cardiotoxicity in terms of uh, TNF release and troponin release. And now we have challenged our cells uh, against uh, the positive tromal uh, cardiac counterpart, the total mesenchymal population, and other two clinically relevant uh, uh, cells like CD34 coming from the bone marrow and the cardiosphere derived cells. We have challenged our cells to protect. Uh, uh, Duchenne cardiomyocyte from uh, uh, releasing TN alpha, TNF alpha and uh, troponin, showing that there is a clear uh, advantage of uh, the uh, CD90 negative uh, compartment. 
And then we have uh, also tested uh, uh, in a myocardial infarction model, mice, in mice, uh, the negative uh, fraction versus uh, the, 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 again, the, the mesenchymal population as a whole, the 90 positive cardiosphereized cells and bone marrow derived cells, showing that the, 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 our uh, stromal CD90 negative uh, compartment uh, is able to recover function at day 21 after myocardial infarction in mice much better than the other, the, the other uh, cell tested and to reduce, to reduce uh, uh, accordingly infarct area and uh, infarct wall uh, thickness, uh, to increase infarct wall thickness. So cumulatively in mice in vivo, it seems that uh, the CD90 negative counterpart uh, cell fraction is more potent uh, to protect the heart from the ischemic insult. And finally, we have also uh, uh, challenged the cells to produce uh, vasculogenesis after in the borders of, of myocardial infarction, showing that uh, the CD90 negative counter, uh, cell type is very, very efficient uh, to uh, generate vasculogenesis as a whole versus uh, the other cell types. So in the end, uh, I think we have identified uh, a subpopulation of uh, the stromal compartment of the human heart, uh, which is uh, highly committed to vasculogenesis, uh, uh, has uh, mesenchymal features uh, and an endothelial features as well. Uh, of course, further experiments are warranted to demonstrate uh, uh, how this cell can contribute to vasculogenesis in terms of uh, integration uh, and the paracrine effect. But uh, I think uh, on the base of uh, what we have observed so far and on the base of uh, a, a, a method that we have uh, uh, patented to isolate this uh, stromal uh, compartment uh, in a GMP-like, so exploitable uh, manner uh, uh, in terms of uh, um, industrialization, so bio, bioreactors, uh, GMP, and, uh, and, um, and, uh, and high, high efficiency and quality production. So all this uh, study has uh, uh, generated a product by process technology which has been patented, uh, which is suitable for the clinical translation. And then uh, very recently from the, um, we have attracted uh, the interest of investors uh, and we have founded uh, a, a startup with the intention to bring uh, this cell therapy product uh, in an allogenic setting to refractory angina patients. The, the, the startup is called Olocare. And then that's it. Uh, so I'd like to thank uh, all my collaborators in the lab uh, and the Olocare people as well, which have been, uh, especially Elisa, she uh, uh, was one of my collaborators in the lab and then she has uh, decided to move from, uh, from lab to industry, to the startup, and challenge herself in, uh, in this, uh, in, in this uh, endeavor. And let, finally, let me thank uh, Beatrice. Beatrice was the person who has, uh, uh, was without her, any clinical study uh, we I have shown you was possible. So the person was central in developing the clinical story that uh, I have uh, illustrated so far. Thank you for your attention.